Thank you very much for inviting me to speak. Um, I actually came in from Los Angeles for this. You see the picture behind me. To me, it looks beautiful. It reminds me of a sun. It could re represent a flower. It could also represent a spaceship to some of you out there. Unfortunately, this picture isn't so pretty. It's actually of a cancer cell, a cell that can invade a body. It can destroy organs from the liver, the lung, the breast, the kidney, the brain. But unfortunately, the destruction doesn't stop just there. It can take away hopes. It can take away dreams. It can take away aspirations. A lot of us have dreams. Some of us want to become astronauts. Some may even want to be president of the United States. The cancer just doesn't invade one person's body. It can affect the caregiver's body. It can affect their mind, the family members' minds. It can destroy their dreams. I'm a cancer doctor. I see cancer daily. I learn about my patient's disease, but more importantly, I learn about them. I learn about who they are. What makes them tick? What are they most passionate about? What regrets may they have? What brings them sadness? And even, what did they dream about? What did they wish for? This got me to thinking, how could I make a change in their lives? Yes, I can treat the cancer, but how could I help their dreams? I've been blogging for about seven to eight years. I got myself on Twitter. I have a Facebook page. We all use social media, but how could I use it for good? I started a support group called the Ruby Red Slippers Club, and I have a young 30-year-old girl with metastatic terminal disease. She once told me, I'd love to go see the Ellen DeGeneres show. I said, well, you know what? I'll get online. I'll get us tickets. Went online, tried to get her tickets. They were, they were out. They were sold out. I called the show. They couldn't give me tickets. I asked people who were in the industry, can you get me tickets? Nobody could. I then put the call out to Twitter. I said, can anybody help me out there? A woman, a breast cancer survivor herself, who I had never met, and had been working in the industry for over 20 years, responded. She asked for her very first favor on behalf of the patient, and we received two VIP tickets for the show. That day I learned the power of social media and how it could potentially save a life, or change a life. I tell my staff to listen to the dreams and the voices of the patient that we treat, and if they have a desire for something, to let me know and we'll see what can what we can do for them. A nurse found out about this, and she came up to me one day. She said, Dr. Tajura, we treated a patient yesterday, and she's not your patient, but you know she's terminal, and she mentioned that she would love to take her husband to go see the Pittsburgh Steelers play, an NFL football team, as you all know. They don't have the money to do so, but she had mentioned this, and I thought I'd let you know. And I said, I looked at the nurse, and I said, well, you know, Let's try to get her there. She said, how? I said, I don't know, but we'll figure it out. That day I went on Twitter. I Twittered airlines. I said, can anybody donate two airline tickets for a patient and her husband to Pittsburgh? Nobody responded. But you don't give up. They say in life, timing is everything. And the following week I was asked to speak at a conference, a Twitter conference in Los Angeles. I spoke about the Ellen story and how it caused magic in a person's life. And I ended my talk with my favorite quote from Plato, the philosopher. It says, be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a harder battle. Afterwards, I just mentioned that there was a terminal patient and her husband who would love to go see the Pittsburgh Steelers play. And I asked if anybody had frequent flyer miles, if anybody had connections to hotels or to the Steelers, to let me know. Find me on Twitter. I didn't expect anything. Right after I said those words, magic happened. A man stood up and said, I'd like to donate my frequent flyer miles. 
Another man came to me on stage and handed me a $20 bill and said, let's get her to Pittsburgh. And then all 400 people handed over a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, and they ended up on stage with a pile of money this high. It was probably one of the most amazing moments of my life of seeing community come together for a stranger. The next day, one of the sponsors of the conference emailed me and said, you know, we were really inspired by you. We would love to donate the hotel room for your patient. And I received another email after that saying, I'd love to, you know, give this, this patient the rental car funds. And eventually, Lynn Swan, he is an NFL Hall of Famer, four-time Super Bowl champion of the Pittsburgh Steelers, found out and donated four tickets for the Heinz Suite opening day this year. You have to remember, I didn't even know this patient, so after receiving permission, I gave her a call. I said, hi, you don't know me, but what's your dream? She goes, who is this? Her husband picked up the other phone. He had just gotten off of working a night shift at the railroad and said, who are you? I said, sir, what's your favorite football team? He said, the Pittsburgh Steelers. The next words from me were, I don't know you, but there are a lot of people who care about you. We've put together a package to send you to Pittsburgh for a game. She started crying, as did I. It was a dream. It was a dream. As you can see here, this is the woman and her husband with Lynn Swan sitting in a suite in Heinz Field for the home opening game. It represents more than a football game. It represents her spirit. It's given her hope. It's fulfilled her dream. She's been dealing with cancer for seven years. This was one of the first weekends she said that she didn't have pain, the pain in her liver, the pain in her lungs, the pain in her brain, the pain in her bones. The stories go further than this. This past summer, my family and I worked in a medical camp in Uganda in East Africa. It takes 24 hours to get there by air. We set up a medical camp with basic white tents and tables. We did primary care work. There was a group of 10 doctors. We saw over 16,000 patients in 10 days. All sorts of cases. The town that we were in, the hospital didn't even have a single EKG machine. It was very bare bones medicine. One night, we came home to the hostel, and there was a phone call wanting to speak with one of the doctors. So I went outside. I said, who could want to talk to us? It was a gentleman who was running an orphanage in Uganda, and he said, is there a surgeon in your medical camp? I said, no, sir, we just have primary care doctors. He goes, we need a surgeon. I said, I, sorry, we're just doing primary care. I'm a specialist, but still, we don't have the... The, the magnitude to do surgeries in this camp. He said, well, do you know of surgeons anywhere else in Africa, whether it be Kenya or South Africa? We need a pediatric surgeon. I said, I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm just here in Uganda for two weeks, but what, what's the problem? What's the question? He showed me this picture. It's of a young baby, a three-week-old newborn named Solomon. He has what is called an umphalocele, which means his abdominal stomach contents never developed and his intestines are coming out. He was taken to the National Hospital in Uganda, but the surgeons did not know what to do. He was currently with infection, sitting in the hospital, and they had no plan. I was about to walk away and say, I'm so sorry, I don't know what to do. But then it hit me and I turned around. I said, sir, do you mind if I speak with the father who was with him? Take a picture. And what I do have is the power of social media and my blog. Do you think I could write the story and put it on my Twitter and see if it works? You never know unless you try. He said, sure. I put it on my blog with the picture and I Twittered about it. Two and a half days later, I received an email. 
Thank you so much. We found a surgeon in Kenya and are flying there tomorrow. Two and a half weeks ago, I received an email. Solomon's completed his first set of surgeries. He's at home with his mother. He has a few more to go, but the steps are in motion. What I would like to end with is this. The world is our platform. The world cares. The world is listening. Social media is a powerful platform. It can give hope. It can make dreams come true. And it could potentially save a life. The question is, this is how I use social media. Now, how will you? Thank you.